What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. This is Big Dog's Gotta Eat. Damn, I gotta change the sign. I'll be BRBs. It is Big Dog's Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. My name is Nicholas. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. If you are new, I already want to uh, apologize if you hear some stuff in the background, maybe like a white noise buzzing. The fan is set up right next to me right here to my left. It is very, very hot in New York today. It's like 90 degrees, it's gonna hit. And uh, we don't have central air in the uh, in the HQ. So I have to turn the fan on, I'm sorry. This is just more important for me to stay cool, calm and collected during these videos. So, I apologize. Maybe one day we'll get central air in the HQ. What I need for you guys to do is hit that thumbs up button. If you've been following along on the Friday mock drafts, every Friday we do a mock draft here at the HQ. Hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube knows that you enjoy the video. Thus, they share with more people. Thus, I grow a bigger audience and I can make more monies. And then I can get central air and you won't have to worry about the buzzing in the background. Today, we are going to do a mock draft on the draft app. And if you want a chance to be in the draft with me, I do these with my subscribers every single Friday. I'm going to start the draft right now. We're going to do this real time and see how quickly it fills up. Boom, just hit create. It sends out an invite to all of my uh, friends on the draft app. And we'll see how quickly this fills up. And then we'll head over here to the... Uh, and boom, filled up. So that was like five seconds. We're running 40-yard damn dashes over here. These are all my subscribers. Uh, all you got to do is download the Draft app. You could find it just by searching Draft in the iTunes store or the Google store or whatever. Or you can go to Draft.com. If you sign up with my promo code BDGE, you will be given $3 to draft with. Now, this is a $1 buy-in league. So, it's technically not a mock draft. We're playing for money here, baby. So, you can come back at the end of the year, collect your winnings. Again, it is Friday. I, uh, I hope you guys are set up to have a gorgeous weekend. It's going to be beautiful weather out here in New York. The draft is going to kick off in 18 seconds, as you could see on the screen. I have the fourth pick. Ooh, that's interesting because I don't think I've gotten the fourth pick yet in one of these mock drafts. I'm usually around the 7, 8, 9 pick. Uh, we've had a lot of interesting news kind of break within the last week or so since the last time I did a mock draft. And throughout these mock drafts, I just talk about a bunch of random shit, to be honest with you. Sometimes my I, I'll get into a point. And I'll start talking about it, and then like something over there will catch my eye, and then I'll completely forget about the point that I was making to begin with. So, again, hit me up on the draft app. Use promo code BDGE. You'll get three dollars to draft with on top of your ten dollar deposit that you should put in, and that will give you ten mock drafts before your actual draft happens in August and September, and you will be completely ready to go. And then you can add me. Um, I believe you can only add friends on the mobile app, so make sure you got the app, and my username is Nick Ercolano. So we've had the first four guys go off the board, the first three, and I'm, I'm on the clock right now. Kamara, Barkley, and Christian McCaffrey. I think this is an easy smash on Zeke. Again, I get the question a lot, if I can choose where I'd want to draft out of anywhere in 2019 fantasy drafts, it would be the top four to get one of these workhorse backs. Uh, recently, I've seen a lot of drafts in which Saquon is no longer the 101, and I'm okay with that, right? I made my running back rankings video last week or two weeks ago, and those four guys were in a tier for me by themselves. Kamara, Barkley, McCaffrey, and Zeke. In a tier means that, yes, I do have one guy ranked above the other, but the value difference between getting one of them and getting the last one in that ranking tier is almost no difference. There's no drop-off for me. So I'm happy getting any of those four running backs. Zeke right now is my 104 because we have no idea what the NFL is going to do with that whole EDC situation where he got put in cuffs. Maybe they'll discipline him because he's dealt with plenty of off-the-field issues. Um, so he's my 104. I got him at the 104. I'm fine with that. He was so, so, so good down the second half of the year last year for Dallas catching passes. They have Kellen Moore coming in as the OC. I think they're going to continue to go more pass-heavy. We saw them pass the ball 57% of the time last year um, over, actually that was over the entire season, which is about a 5% increase from the previous year. And I'm assuming that percentage was even higher just down the second half of the year because Dak was never one to get, you know, more than 33 pass attempts in a game, but he set career highs two times over the second half of the year. 
in terms of pass attempts. So I think that's going to be the offense that we see uh, moving forward with Dak and, and Zeke. So he should continue to get, you know, somewhere between 45 and 55 receptions over the full season. After Zeke, we had Melvin Gordon, who is typically my 105, DeAndre Hopkins, David Johnson, Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon. So let's talk about Joe Mixon for a while. I got a lot of questions as soon as we saw Jonah Williams go down. Now, Jonah Williams was the Bengals' first round draft pick this year. He was going to come in and immediately play left tackle. He's out of Alabama. Kid's an absolute stud. He's not someone, a lot of times we see offensive linemen be picked in the first, second round, and it's a lot of projections, right? It's like, oh, this kid is really athletic. Um, He can develop into a nice player at the second level. This guy is a guy who was proven, right? He has made uh, a ton of consecutive starts for Alabama. I think it was like two or three straight years of starts at very high level production. He was versatile. He's moved around the offensive line. Um, All SEC was one of the top guards in the entire country. So he has everything working for him in terms of like production, size, measurables, those things. So he seems like he's going to come in and be an absolute stud off the off the rip. He tears, I, I, he tore something in his shoulder, I believe. So he's going to be out for the year. That's a monster hit to Mixon, right? Where I was normally taking Mixon uh, at, the, at the end of the first round, he's going to move back a tier. And again, this is why tiers are so important. And uh, we're on the clock right now. So I'm actually going to just tune in to what's going on here. Um, I took Zeke with the 104. And I like Dalvin Cook's value down here at the 207. I don't get a lot of Dalvin Cook because you kind of have to reach for him if you want to get him around the 2-1 or 2-2. But if he drops to the to the mid back half of the second round, I'm all in on that. Big fan of Dalvin Cook there. So we start off with Zeke. We start off with Dalvin Cook. Um, back to Jonah Williams. So Jonah Williams gets hurt. And that's a monster hit to this offensive line. And we see them bring in, you know, a coach from the McVay tree. And I think they were kind of setting up the offense the same way that the Rams did in order to do their 180 flip, right? The first thing they did was go out and sign Whitworth. And that absolutely, you know, changed the narrative of who that team was. And their offensive line got so good so quickly, like overnight. And I think that's what the Bengals were going for. Jonah Williams being out is a huge hit because that was one of the biggest concerns for this offensive line, right? They've ranked in the bottom five, seven in terms of run blocking and pass blocking over the last couple of years. This seemed like a move that could change things for them. Uh, Unfortunately, Cordy Glenn is going to step back in at left tackle. And Glenn was the 60th ranked tackle per PFF last year. So uh, that's what I believe they would call not good. Now, we've seen Mike Evans, George Kittle, Damian Williams, Antonio Brown, Go off the board. I am up in three picks. I have two running backs, but the cool thing with best ball is that you don't have to choose who you start on a weekly basis. Best ball, you're literally only drafting. Oh, James Conner might fall to me here. That would be interesting because I don't have a lot of shares to him of him, but he doesn't normally almost ever fall to the third round. He's a guy I'm normally fading in the second round, but again, guys, I like to diversify the revenue. If you do a lot of leagues, if you do a lot of best ball drafts, and you realize that you're not drafting a lot of one player, you got to know that you're going to be wrong about some stuff. So I would diversify, and I'm definitely going to go with James Conner here. So off the bat, we have Zeke, Dalvin Cook, James Conner. Now that I went with three strong running backs, I could probably fade the running back position for a long time, which is great because I see a ton of value in the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds at the pass catching positions, wide receivers, tight ends, so I could probably get something like a, a combination of, you know, Diggs, Brandon Cooks, Kenny Galladay, Tyler Lockett, and maybe like an OJ Howard or something like that. So um, what I'm seeing early on is that the running backs go off the board really quickly. If you watched my video on Wednesday, it was the riskiest running backs in the early rounds. And I went through the first three rounds of drafts right now, looking at ADP from the FFPC, so high stakes leagues. And right now, we have 18 running backs going off the board in the first three rounds. But we know, because I did the research historically, over the last five years, six of the top 12 running backs. So if you pick a top 12 running back in fantasy football, on average, over the last five years, six of them are not going to finish inside the top 12. Over four of them are not going to finish inside the top 18. And about three and a half of them are not going to finish this top 24. So if you're finishing outside the top 18 and you're drafted as a top 12 running back, I would consider that a bust. So we know that the bust rate is pretty high. It's almost 50%, right? You're not going to finish inside the top 12. And uh, 
a lot running backs are going off the board very very early this year and in a very high volume the first 12 are off the board within the top 16 or 18 picks this year which means everyone's loading up on running back early uh and a lot of the good wide receivers the, the you know the tier two wide receivers are dropping pretty late into drafts so my middle round strategy is going to be hammering these these wide receivers and as uh, as i said you know we're seeing a lot of these guys fall to me right what did i say stefan diggs brandon cooks tyler lockett and it looks like at least one of these top guys is going to fall to me here i would love if brandon cooks fell to me here give me that b cook give me that b cook don't do it to me levy yeah yeah i absolutely love brandon cooks in best ball um his finishes over the last four years have been insane and he's still young which means that we probably have not seen the ceiling I'm actually all in on on just grabbing I think this is going to be the Cooks and Robert Wood show in 2019 again Cooper Cup's timeline just does not add up with what they want to happen um right Cup tore his ACL and I believe is week 11 and then you heard reports that Sean McVay said he was going to be ready for training camp. Like that was it's an extremely unrealistic timetable. And then, you know, we see that they push that back and that he should be ready for week one. I don't think he'll be, you know, if he is ready for week one, I don't think we'll see him play a full slate of snaps. If they do push him too hard too early, I that could absolutely lead to uh, a quick injury um, for Cooper Cup. And I just don't think he's going to be at full health. And I think if they push him too hard, again, he's going to be off the field sooner rather than later. We know that um, there is a 30% chance from Dr. Jesse Morse. Damn, I was hoping Woods somehow fell to me there. Um, I was hoping there was a 30% chance. I wasn't hoping. I don't know what the... I don't even know what I'm spewing about. This is what, I, this is what I'm saying. I lose my train of thought. And I need to go back to the Joe Mixon thing. Um, there's a 30% chance of anyone that tears their ACL, any athlete that tears their ACL of re-tearing it within the first two years of that first tear. We know that because they've done studies on it per Dr. Jesse Morse. The first year they're back, their physical play and their mental state is not at 100%. So we should be, fo- uh, we should be fading players who tear their ACL you know, midway or late into the season the year prior. So that's where I don't like Cup. And that's why I love Woods and Cooks at their current value, which is ridiculous. The end of the fourth round, I would love to grab Cooks there. 1,200 yards last year, career season at the age of 25. Damn, I just got totally sniped by Tyler Lockett. So again, there's usually a lot of good value here. Oh, wow. Freeman's all the way down in the fifth round. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to take Freeman, but I want to talk about Freeman after I do that. So we have the wide receivers. What tight ends do we got going on here? I'm going to grab O.J. Howard here because I want to talk about O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard was one of the most consistent tight ends in fantasy last year. He put up 50 receiving yards or more in seven of the nine games he played. And per my draft guide, Dr. Jesse Morris puts O.J. Howard as a, a lower risk injury guy, actually, which was surprising to me. He is all set on a breakout. Basically says that towards the end of the year, he kind of wears down. We've seen it both times both seasons lower right leg injuries at the end of the season which means he needs to be in better conditioning shape so oj howard almost seems like the perfect sell high candidate right because we assume that he's going to take over the starting position be very good in this prolific passing offense and put up really good numbers over the first eight to ten weeks of the season and then you might be able to sell high on that you might be able to sell really high because he could be in that elite tier and as we said the conditioning is a little bit of concern but dr morse does not see any problems with um, you know, future predictive injuries when it comes to OJ Howard. So he's very high on him, which makes me feel better about him. Devonta Freeman. Let's talk Devonta Freeman. You know, in my videos, I like to go all over the place and give you guys value anywhere that I can. These odds were posted on June 22nd. So if you're watching this on Friday, these, this was six days ago, about a week ago, about a week ago. And on Monday, my draft guy drops because we were talking about tears, right? And with the Joe Mixon injury, I had him in the tier with Melvin Gordon as like the 109 or something like that. Mixon might not even drop in my rankings necessarily. He might still be like my RB6, but he's definitely going to drop to that tier with, I believe it was David Johnson and Dalvin Cook. So what the tiers ranking does is tell you that maybe the other positions are better picks at that spot. 
So now normally, maybe if I went Joe Mixon at 109, he still might be my RB6 off the board, but now he's going to drop back in tier and I would take basically any elite wide receiver that we're seeing at the first, you know, that first turn where it's Devonta, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Juju Smith-Schuster. I would pretty much take all of those guys over Joe Mixon now, although he still might be the RB6. Um, so I went OJ Howard in the fifth round and we're going to get back to that, that Vegas odd sheet, which I think is super interesting right now. I'm wondering if I could get... I'm hoping one of these guys took Mahomes. All right, so we have someone at the turn that took Mahomes. So I have a good chance of still getting one of these top quarterbacks. So I'm going to fade the quarterbacks for one more round. I probably need some wide receiver help. You know, I have no shares of Tyreek Hill. I'm absolutely avoiding the situation. I feel like maybe we should actually talk on that. I'm going to take him here. Why not? Uh, Tyreek Hill, so we heard that the case, the criminal case is over, right? The investigation is done. He had his meeting with the NFL that doesn't mean anything. They could, they're still going to suspend him, most likely. Uh, we're, we're probably not going to hear anything about Tyreek Hill's suspension until probably late mid to late July. So don't look too much into any of the meetings that you hear. There still needs to be a decision to be made um, on Tyreek Hill and his suspension. What was I saying? Oh, oh, Devonta Freeman. So these are the odds per Vegas of league leaders in passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards. One, I would love to know what you guys see as the best values on this sheet. Um, I like Matt Ryan at 11 to 2 there. I think Kirk Cousins at 22 to 1 is really, really good. Um, who else do we got here? I think a lot of these are, they're not necessarily like spot on, right? Vegas is obviously not right about everything, but I think what it does is give you a realistic baseline for what you should be expecting. For running backs, Nick Chubb has the second highest odds tied with Saquon Barkley to lead the league. And I love that because I'm someone that is not is not off of Nick Chubb whatsoever for all these like small term concerns that people have with like Kareem Hunt and things like that. Nick Chubb's going to absolutely dominate the NFL for um, for the large portion of the year. So I like Nick Chubb at 6-1. to Y'all know how much I love Marlon Mack at 15-1. to this is perfect at 15 to 1. He's great value because a lot of you guys are a little bit nervous about Mac and his passing workload. Let me zoom in a little bit. And his passing workload, right? But this is only for rushing yards. Marlon Mack could very well lead the league in, in rushing yards next year. And 15, 15 to 1, I think, is great value. Devonta Freeman is 50 to 1, people. He has the same odds as Ronald Jones for leading the NFL in rushing yards. 50 to 1. That should be a little bit telling to you guys. And let's go. Aaron Rodgers fell to me. So I love taking one of the elite quarterbacks. In my tier one, we have Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck, Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson. Patrick Mahomes, if you want to get him in a best ball league or any league, you're going to have to use a fourth or fifth round pick on, on him. But since I have all these guys in the same tier, there's not a big value drop off for me. So if I can get Aaron Rodgers in the seventh round, I think quarterbacks are very underrated in best ball, right? I, I do like to go with a late round option in seasonal leagues the reason that they're underrated in best ball is because in seasonal leagues you could take two late round quarterbacks if they don't work out you could drop them and hit the waiver wire that's not the case in best ball leagues though because you don't do any waiver wire moves that's the thing about best ball it's all about drafting so if you think you're if you think you're good at drafting if you think you're good with adps and figuring out where players are good values that's where best ball is really good for you. You don't do any in-season moves. You don't do any waiver wire or trades or anything like that. It's literally just drafting. And every week, best ball, draft.com automatically starts the best quarterback, the best two running backs, the best three wide receivers, and the best tight end. This is half PPR. This is no kickers, no defense. Simple. Just skill positions, half PPR, no crazy scoring rules. You draft 18 players, so you're drafting a very big roster, which accounts for the fact that there are going to be injuries, there are going to be guys who bust. So you kind of got to go at this strategically. And that's why I think quarterbacks in best ball are super undervalued, right? Like I would use a sixth or seventh round pick on an elite quarterback in best ball when maybe I wouldn't do that in a season long league, again, because you can use picks, like you can go Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen in season long. And if, you know, Lamar Jackson gets hurt because he runs the ball so much and Josh Allen just doesn't improve as a passer, you can be like, okay, whatever, I'm going to drop them and I could pick up Kirk Cousins, who's a quarterback 19 right now off the board. You can't do that in best ball. That is why I think people draft the same way when it comes to quarterbacks in this, but not with um, 
But I don't think the late round strategy is a good one for best ball. Back to the sheet. Yes, Devonta Freeman, 50 to 1. Ronald Jones, 50 to 1. But all three of the rookies are 50 to 1 as well. Um, so that should be telling, guys. And that, you know, I, I've been, I'm, I'm going to look either really good or really dumb when it comes to Devonta Freeman. If he has a really good year, people are going to absolutely shit on me. That's fine. Comes with the territory. It's an occupational hazard. Um, who did I just draft a quarterback? Aaron Rodgers. We love the stacks. And I love Rashad Penny. Damn it. I wouldn't, now, now is when I wish I did not go wide receiver or running back heavy early because now I feel bad taking a Rashad Penny. But I like Will Fuller. I absolutely love Christian Kirk. We're going to grab Christian Kirk and hope that Rashad Penny falls to me. But he probably won't, but that's okay. The other thing to note is that when you're drafting on here, there is, um, you got to be weary of the bye weeks. They make it a lot easier on the app. I would very much suggest drafting on the app and not so much on the website. I do this only so that I could stream and it looks a lot nicer when you guys are watching it on YouTube. But the app has all the bye weeks nicely set for you. You can look at your team and see which of the players that you drafted already have the same bye week. So I know that. Christian Kirk and Tari Kill are both bye weeks of 12. So it's just something to be cognizant of. I'm not going to base my entire roster around bye weeks because it's pros and cons, right? You can have a lot of guys on week 12 buys and you're going to have a shitty week 12, but that means that the rest of your weeks are at full strength. So I don't look too much into it. And that's the same thing. I get this question with season long drafts as well. Um, how much you look into bye weeks? When I'm doing season long, if I'm like drafting with my friends or whatever and we have our high stakes league, bye weeks play zero role in how I draft. I draft based on value and draft uh, based on who's on the board. I see a lot of good value still left right here. Um, and on the on the website, you could still see the bye weeks. If you click on a player right here, it's in like light gray. I wish they had it in the middle here so you could actually see the bye weeks. And then you can click on your team name up top and see, um, ah, see, they don't have the bye weeks listed here. So that's something I'm gonna have to talk to the team about adding in. So I would love Will Fuller to follow me here. I also love Kiki QT. And we love stacks. We love stacks. We're talking about paper stacks. Again, hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying so I can hopefully not be broke this entire summer. Um, but we love stacks. And we know that. I'll get to it in a second. Damn it. Will Fuller off the board. I love Miles Sanders here all the way in the ninth round. Royce Freeman here. Man, there's, there's a lot of good value up on the board still. When is Royce Freeman's bye week? Royce Freeman's bye week is 10. I have no running backs on a week 10 bye week. So I'm going to grab Royce Freeman here just because I think he's the best value on the board. But we know that we love the stack. And I'll probably grab either Jerron Allison or Marquez Valdez-Scantling, whoever falls to me. Because we got my man Steve. Steve Mullen. He is a new writer per with Big Dogs. And he is focusing specifically on best ball. So he puts out a blog every single week um best ball related and this is him right now so you can follow him on twitter at sr mullen 1979 um and he puts a an article out every week literally just for best ball strategy so if you go to um bigdogsfantasy.com bigdogsfantasy.com head over to articles you'll see some best ball deep dive stacking. And we talked about this last week um, in terms of like winning percentage, right? When you're in a 12 team or a 10 team draft, best ball draft, you have a certain percentage chance of winning that, right? So if it's 10 team, 10% is your normal rate. But we found out by using some of the data that draft.com has that you have a higher winning percentage rate if you stack players, right? So if you stack your quarterback one to wide receiver one, your stack win percentage goes up um, exponentially, depending on which team stack that you have. And uh, it goes up if you have any stack. Quarterback, wide receiver one, quarterback with wide receiver two, quarterback with the top tight end. And you can see the quarterback with the wide receiver one and tight end is even higher rate. So what I try to do, I try to go out of my way to see what quarterback I drafted. And of course, in this case, it was Aaron Rodgers. And I want to stack them with someone else, uh, their, their wide receiver on the team. So I'll probably be, again, targeting Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Uh, I like Geronimo Allison, but I think Marquez has just as good of a chance to break out this year and take over that wide receiver two role as he does, but he's going a ton of picks later. 
So I'll probably be targeting MVS here. He has a bye week of week 11. Let me see which wide receivers. I have no receivers on a bye week of week 11. A lot of times I'll be stacking Deshaun Jackson and um, and Aaron Rodgers. You know what? I'm going to grab Deshaun Jackson because I like him better than I like Marquez Valdez-Scantling in best ball. And hope that... Oh, nice. Because he was this guy's an Eagles fan, so he was probably going to take Deshaun Jackson if I didn't. Um, so hopefully Marquez falls to me at 11-4. And again, guys, you don't... Yep, there <laughs> he took once. You don't start anybody. So Deshaun Jackson has probably more value in these drafts because he's a guy who is, you know, boomer bust. He's going to have his big weeks, but you don't have to start him in his, in his... You don't have to decide when to start him in his smaller weeks. It's one of the best parts about best ball. The other best part is that the ADP is extremely, extremely accurate to what your season-long drafts are going to be. So if you are practicing on draft.com, it's going to be super accurate to how most of your leagues are drafting because you pay a minimum of a dollar. You could pay anywhere from a dollar up to four figures. They have high stakes leagues as well, which means that people are going to be taking it seriously. No matter how much money you put in, $1, $1,000, you got money on the line, so you're going to be taking the draft seriously, right? So that's the best part about it. So make sure you go sign up for the draft app. I'm telling you, it is like the cleanest, most fun. They're super, super addicting. So many people that have signed up, like after I told them to sign up and started using it, have become addicted to them. And they're like, dude, I can't stop. And I'll start up like 10 drafts throughout the week. And uh, I literally, like anyone who is on here and joins using my promo code BDGE, um, I add back. So look, I got I got like 10 new people that I got to follow. So thank you all for signing up, guys. Based Shababa, Big Stank 89, what up? Um, so make sure when you do sign up on draft.com, you hit me on there at Nick Ercolano. Marquez Valdez Scantling fell to me. Let's go. So we got our stack. Uh, I love that stack right there. The Deshaun Jackson and Marquez. Two really solid wide receivers after, I'm not going to say I faded the position, but um, I definitely went really heavy on the running back. So let's take a look at my team so far. We have Aaron Rodgers as the QB1. We have Zeke, Dalvin Cook, James Conner, Roy Freeman as running backs. Brandon Cooks, Tyreek Hill, Christian Kirk, Deshaun Jackson, Marquez, Valdez, Scantling as wide receivers, and OJ Howard as the tight end. Man, I actually love this team. This might be one of my favorite teams I've drafted um, on this app so far. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know who you guys think are the best value still on the board. I kind of like D.D. Westbrook here. He's someone that I'm gaining a little bit of steam on. I don't absolutely love him. He's probably not someone I'm going to draft in season-long leagues because I don't see that Jacksonville wide receiver core just being like a great source of value. Nick Foles is not like a high statistics kind of guy, especially he's not going to be in this type of offense. Jacksonville's going to be run heavy. Um, and speaking of, I saw Leonard Fournette was at 15 to one to claim the rushing lead title. Um, and, you know, I look into these heavily, the Vegas odds, but I don't, um, it, you know, Vegas plays it safe if, if you're going to say they don't like they don't factor risk and reward they only when they're making their odds they pretty much only factor in upside which is why they have Leonard Fournette 15 to 1 and they're they know that not a lot of people will take them because the injury risk is so high but they don't give you a break based on those kind of things um that's the thing when it comes to like a Leonard Fournette or a I don't know some of the other guys on here that <laughs> I love how they have Frank Gore 250 to 1 fucking screaming value absolute value um, and if you're watching this on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, y'all, I got to plug the draft guide in here, man. The draft guide drops on Monday. So if you're watching this over the weekend, it comes out in like two days. I've been working nonstop on this thing, and I will be working nonstop on this throughout the entirety of the weekend. We've got everything you need in here. We've got rankings, dynasty, rookie, season long, top 250 big board, positional rankings broken down by tiers. There's two different guides. There's the Rookie Dynasty guide and then the Season Long. The Season Long is the one that drops on Monday. The Rookie Dynasty has been out now for a month or two, I believe. Let me make sure I'm not... Oh, I'm on the board next. So we're seeing a lot of rookies go off the board. Damian Harris. I like Damian Harris here. Paris Campbell, I'm not too high on. I don't think he'll have a great rookie rookie season. Um, yeah, give me all the D.D. Westbrook here. So now we have six wide receivers, four running backs, a quarterback, and a tight end. If I get a top 
quarterback in the top tight end like I did, um, you know, OJ Howard and Aaron Rodgers, I usually will only go two of those positions. That's my strategy. I like to go two quarterbacks, two tight ends, make sure I get a top one at each position. If I end up getting a lower tier guy, like if Vance McDonald ends up being my, um, Vance McDonald ends up being my tier, my top tight end, I will probably end up picking three tight ends, right? It, you gotta, you gotta be fluid. You gotta be like water when you're drafting and kind of adapt your team based on you know the top guys at that position. So for running backs, I'll probably only draft five guys because my team is so stacked at running back between those top five guys. At wide receiver, I know that um, I can't find it in the article in that stack article, but I know Steve told me that drafting eight wide receivers gives you the best win percentage in best ball. So we like to do stacks. We like to get a top tier quarterback and we like to go eight wide receivers and probably six running backs. Um, so something to keep in mind, I'll probably go five, five running backs, eight wide receivers. Um, so I think, you know, in the beginning of the draft, I'll usually draft based on value towards the end of the draft. I'll draft based on how I want my team to turn out and, and, you know, best winning percentages and things like that, because you do start three wide receivers and you only start two running backs. So you want to have more wide receivers than running backs. But again, it depends on who you end up drafting in the beginning of the draft. I think Peyton Barber is a very good value compared to where Ronald Jones is going off the board. A lot of good stuff coming out of Ronald Jones, which is making me like him a little bit more, right? When there's smoke, there's fire on these reports. It's coming out from teammates. It's coming out from beat reporters, from head coaches. So he's probably looking pretty good. That being said, Peyton Barber is still very much there. Is that fucking old Greg? Black Snow 4? Dude, I was literally watching the old Greg video today. That's incredible. I showed my roommate um, the old Greg video. He's never seen it before. And I haven't brought it up in like literally 10 years. And for some reason, I watch it this weekend. And you fucking have old Greg as your Abby. I don't know if I'm excited or if I'm really fucking pissed off right now, to be honest. Um... Okay, one of the best fucking values in best ball is Deion Lewis, and it's not even close. Deion Lewis is still going to get around 150 touches this year, and he's going to catch 50 passes. Like, Deion Lewis, I can't, I can't overemphasize how important Deion Lewis is in best ball drafts. I like a lot of these other guys going here. Like, I'm really in on Justice Hill, like... Alexander Madison, Devin Singletary, for their upside. But none of them have a proven workload. All of them might get five touches a game. We know what Deion Lewis is going to get. Even if Derrick Henry gets 280 carries, Deion Lewis is still going to get 100 carries and 50 receptions, guys. So that built-in workload is massive because if, if one of your starting running backs in best ball gets hurt, you you're not you don't need that upside. You need points in your lineup week in and week out. And that's something Deion Lewis can get for you in the 13th round. Like Carlos Hyde might not be used at all in Kansas City. If Damian Williams is as good as a lot of people think he is, Carlos Hyde is going to get a handful of touches a game. But Deion Lewis is going to get receiving work no matter what the case is in Tennessee, which I absolutely love. And speaking of, we just heard a report come out that um Aaron Jones, you know, want, they want Aaron Jones to, or they want running backs to be more involved in the passing game in Green Bay. Makes sense. They have, uh, what's his face? Matt LaFleur as the OC, or the head coach, excuse me. Green Bay's backfield finished 24th in total receptions last season, and the unit's 17% target share was well below the league average. It sounds like they will rank a bit better in those numbers under the new coaching staff. I love it when we can give running backs the ball in the passing game, LaFleur said. That's one more. L, that's one more eligible that the defense really has to focus on. Aaron Jones took a step forward in the passing game last year, and it appears likely he'll he'll he will see even more opportunities moving forward. So, Aaron Jones is a guy that I'm getting a little bit higher on, and you know everyone loves Aaron Jones from a talent standpoint, and I do too. But I, I think they've shown that they don't want to use him as a featured workhorse or a featured running back in this offense. But I'm getting more high on the fact that maybe they'll just use him like Alvin Kamara and. If they do that, he's someone that's super efficient with his touches, just like Kamara. He'll get the majority of the passing workload, and he doesn't need 25 touches to be a top fantasy option. And with the lowered workload, his re-injury, his injury risk is lowered. And that's what's always scared me, because anytime they try to use him as a featured workhorse, 
he usually did not finish the season well. Um, he always got hurt, and um, he's had the off-field issues. So that's something that I was keeping a close eye on. But I'm coming more and more into the fact that they might just use him as like a Kamara guy, right? I feel like every offense wants a Kamara now between Terrell Henderson in Los Angeles and Aaron Jones in Green Bay. Uh, but I think that's very, very much at the... Um, I'm going to grab Mark Andrews here. I love Mark Andrews to break out this year. Guy's an athletic freak. Super underrated the position. Um, with Aaron Jones, and I wanted to I wanted to look back and see, you know, I mean, Matt LaFleur comes from the McVay coaching tree. And one of the things that I think separates a lot of these better offensive-minded coaches is using the running backs in the passing game on first and second downs. Because people like to establish a run on first, second down. But normally that gives you, what, two, three, four yards. Every single time you pass to the running back on first or second down, you're pretty much getting like a free six or seven yards. It's so easy for running backs to get that. And if they break out a big one, cool, first down. So I use sharp football stats. And this is one of the tools in the draft guide. Um, It's actually an article that is not published yet. You can't actually see it. Three days, 23 hours, 51 minutes, 12 seconds. Uh, It Become the GOAT. Become the GOAT fantasy footballer. It is a massive article just using, showing you guys my favorite resources where you find stats, where you find really anything, contract details, um, every resource that I use, that I bring the big facts to you in these videos, comes from that article. So that's in the draft guide. Make sure you cop before Monday. Um, Sharp Football Stats is one of my favorite resources. This is from Warren Sharp, this website. He put together any in-depth number that you want to know about a team is on this website, sharpfootballstats.com. They have target rate by position. So, you know, Matt LaFleur was the OC in Tennessee. He basically ran the offense. So I want to look at, like, yeah, he likes passing to the running backs more, but, like, is that true? Last year, they only passed to the running backs on 20% of their plays, which is actually below the NFL average of 21%. But what I also like to do is filter out games or, you know, like third down and fourth down because those are not normally, like, your game plan. You're kind of forced into doing stuff. Um and I think this this is more like neutral game script. And same thing with the offense um, in terms of what the score is in the game at the given time. So we'll go only on, all right, bro. Only on first and second down. So the early downs. And then we'll do the, uh, the margin of the offense, seven and seven. So they were either leading by seven or fewer points or losing by seven or fewer points. I'm on the clock and I'm about to waste my pick. We'll go Michael Gallup, sure. Cool, they took Big Ben. I'm not mad about that, unless they have the same bye week. Let me make sure Big Ben and Aaron Rodgers do not have the same bye week, because that would be not good. If you're going to go with two quarterbacks and two tight ends only, make sure that they do not have the same bye week, people. And I have a lot of things running on my computer, so it slows down, which is why I use the app when I'm drafting, even though I am filming on this. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers and Big Ben have different passing, uh, different bye weeks. Back to the target rate by position. So I like to filter out um, just neutral game scripts, right? Not leading by too much, not losing by too much. So you know what the actual plan behind the offense is, right? And that's more predictive. Because as soon as you get down by like 21 points, obviously you're going to pass the ball a lot more. If you're up by 21 points, you're going to run the ball a lot more. Um, So you see that Tennessee actually threw the ball on 24% of their plays as opposed to 20% in neutral game scripts. So they do indeed try to throw the ball to their running backs. Um, which is a good sign. And again, I think that like teams that pass the ball on first and second down to the running backs are getting just like free yardage. And you can look at it here. Yards per attempt um, to the running backs on first and second down for Tennessee was 5.8 yards, which is, it didn't rank highly among NFL teams, but just as, as a team strategy, you're getting 5.8 yards every single time you throw to the running back on first or second down, as opposed to probably getting two, three, or four yards, like I said. Um, when you're just running the ball with a running back on those first or second down. So that's a massive difference to get a couple yards and put you in a much better position. So I think they will utilize it more. And like I said, Deion Lewis caught 55 passes last year. If Aaron Jones can catch 55 or 60 passes and run the ball 200 to 215 times, he could very well very well finish as an RB1 with Aaron Rodgers leading that team. They should get a lot of scoring opportunities. And the fact that he's so efficient, his numbers should be really good. So after I make this pick, I actually need help from you guys. Um, on deciding who I want my keeper to be. Okay, cool. So Michael Gallup actually ended up falling to me. 
Michael Gallup isn't a isn't a guy that I absolutely love, but if you look at you know I talked about how I think um, this Dallas offense is probably going to continue to pass the ball a lot going into 2019. You know, over the second half of the year, we saw Gallup start getting really involved. Like, look at these target totals from week nine on. Six, three, five, six, seven, nine, four, six, and then in the playoffs, six, nine. Uh, we saw him finish with our last game in the playoffs, six for 119. He didn't put up monster numbers, but like 500 yards for a rookie is really not bad. And I think, you know, getting into this offense for the second year is going to be good for Michael Gallup. And speaking of the Cowboys pass offense... One of the best values I saw on this, and I want you guys to drop who you think is the best value, who are some of the best values in the comment section down below. And please, guys, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button while you are down there. I think Amari Cooper at 20 to 1 is fantastic. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster is tied for Antonio Brown for the second best odds to lead the league in receiving yards. Absolutely love that. Actually, I think Odell Beckham 11 to 2 is better than 6 to 1. So Odell is number 2. Then Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster are tied with the third best odds at 6-1. to one. Brandon Cooks at 40-1 to one is fantastic. Like I said, he had a career high with 1,200 receiving yards last year. He was only 25 years old. He has not hit his ceiling yet. And if Cooper Cup is out, Brandon Cooks is going to get a ton of volume, a ton of targets. So Brandon Cooks at 40-1 to one is fantastic. I might throw 100 on that. I might start a GoFundMe so that you guys can give me a bunch of money that I could throw on the best value bets. And then depending on how much you give, I'll, I'll shed out the money to you guys if you trust me to pick the value bets. So we are in the 17th and 18th round, which are the last two rounds. Again, this is best ball. So you pick a large ass team and they start everyone automatically based on their software, the top performing guys of that, that week. And then each week you'll add up your point totals and whoever has, you know, whoever's team has the first, second, and third most points will get payouts depending on how much money you robo calls what up though how much money was the league buying so i need a tight end i have no interest in getting any of these old ass tight ends that are coming off significant injuries darren waller is a guy like in the uh, at the end of drafts he's getting a lot of hype out of oakland and if he could play that jared cook role i think that we might see something something uh something nice from him again i forgot to check the bye weeks Oh, no, I already took Mark Andrews. Okay, so I have three three tight ends, whatever. Um, and none of them have the same bye week. Go, 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 go me. So I will take a wide receiver with my last pick because I don't need another running back because we are so strong. Oh, Malcolm Brown is a fantastic last round pick too. I can't believe he's falling all the way this far. Um, we'll see what wide receivers are on the board. In the 18th round, I don't hate Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills, we know, is a good best ball option because he gets deep, right? And I'll have a couple of those big weeks where he goes three for 80 and a touchdown and with ryan fitzpatrick coming in you know he loves to chuck that shit deep he's a perfect match for kenny stills and kenny stills just goes off the board god damn it mills booliana some of y'all got some weird names on here um who are some other late round guys i like in best ball i like antonio callaway I think he'll have his moments as well. If he's the wide receiver too, like he'll get plenty of really easy coverage with Odell and Jarvis Landry there. And he's a very, he's a speedster. He's a guy who gets down the field. He should have had way more numbers than he did last year. He dropped so many balls deep. But if he can, um, if he can, you know, fix some of those concentration drops, he could very well hit on a lot of the deep balls by Baker. Baker was one of the most, first of all, voluminous and accurate deep ball passers last year in the NFL. Let me see if I can pull this up quickly before. Before the draft ends. So Baker, if we're looking at deep passing per PFF. Baker was the third most accurate deep passer last year. Um, he also attempted 72 deep passes in only 14 games or 13 and a half games so that was a lot of deep passes per game and he was one of the most accurate and Antonio Callaway is the one that excels down the field so I like Antonio Callaway a lot as a uh, as a last round best ball option and you have see I don't like any of these slot receivers I'm not looking for floors when I draft receivers in best ball like Zay Jones I don't care like these slot receivers I don't care much for um Ted Ginn eh, how long does he actually maintain that role over Trey Con Smith so Antonio Callaway seems to be the best option, in my opinion, on the board right now. So that will actually wrap up my lineup, I believe.
and this is the final product. So we have Aaron Rodgers and Big Ben at quarterback. And I know I, I, I've been saying to avoid Big Ben, but I got him in the 15th round and his ADP keeps dropping further and further. So I think eventually he'll become a, 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 a value in fantasy drafts, to be honest, because he, uh, he's still going to throw the ball so much. Like They can be a little bit more run heavy and he could still go over 600 pass attempts. So I, I, I like Big Ben if he keeps dropping late. So we had Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben, running backs, Zeke, Dalvin Cook, James Conner, Royce Freeman, Deion Lewis. Absolutely love that stack. Wide receivers, Brandon Cooks, Christian Kirk, Tyreek Hill, Deshaun Jackson, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, D.D. Westbrook, Michael Gallup, and Antonio Callaway. Tight end, we have Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, and O.J. Howard. Dude, I absolutely love this team, yo. Give me a thumbs up if you like this team. This is a strong-ass team. Depending on, if Tyreek Hill gets only four games in his suspension, this team is absolutely going to win this league. If he gets like 10 games, might be a different story. But I really like what we put together here. We were able to stack Rodgers with Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Went with two quarterbacks five running backs, eight wide receivers. Make sure you're following my man, Steve Mullen, if you want all the best ball action. Again, at SRMullen1979. Check BigDogsFantasy.com weekly for his article that drops. I believe this week is going to be best ball zero tight end strategy. So I'm actually, I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of numbers he has up in here. Um, You can go check out this picture at Dave Richard. I actually think I put it on my YouTube news feed. So... If you head over to the news feed on my community, I'm not sure actually how to do it from my page, but I, I, I put the picture up on there. So go to my YouTube profile and then click community and you'll be able to see that picture. Um, and then make sure you go cop the draft guide, y'all. You are going to be blown away by how much stuff we have in here. I'll show you the market share sheet, which is absolutely phenomenal. We put together a market share sheet receiving rushing so four different market share sheets receiving rushing red zone rushing red zone receiving to show you the percentage of the market share that each player had um, inside the 10 zone inside the red zone inside the goal line and their receptions targets things like that so 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 good and make sure you sign up on draft.com if you want to draft with me draft.com or the draft app in itunes make sure you hit up that promo code bdge you will get three dollars to draft with go add me at nick Urcolano on the draft app I will add you back, and then I will invite you to all the best ball leagues that I do throughout the week. You got to be quick on the trigger finger. As I showed you before, the league filled up in less than five seconds. I love y'all. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see y'all on Monday, which is going to be another good episode, as always. We're talking mid-round wide receivers like the DJ Moores, the Calvin Ridleys, the Mike Williams, who you should draft, and why. I'm out. I love you. Goodbye.